Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the purpose and objective of an important concept called internal control. Internal control is covered in your accounting courses as well as the BEC exam that's going to be going away later on the CPA exam as well as the audit. So it's very important to understand the concept of internal control. Also internal control will cover IT, information technology. So you have to have a deep understanding of internal control in order to appreciate the role and the benefit that the internal control generate for a company. So whether you are a student or a CPA candidate, it's very important to understand this concept. What I want you to think about when you think of an internal control is think about this fort, this castle. What is inside this castle? Inside this castle, we have our assets. We have our assets, our resources, but basically our cash, inventory, property, plant and equipment, stuff that the company cares about because we need to use it to run the business. Inside this fort sits something very important and that's our accounting information system. That's the system that generates our financial statements, income statement, balance sheet, statement of cash flows, stockholders equity. Also, this accounting information system generate internal reports that's going to help us run the company. So inside this fort is a very important component, the accounting information system. Inside this fort, we have employees, our employees, and those employees are very important to us. We want to make sure they're running the company efficiently, effectively. Now, what is this fort protecting us from? Well, it's protecting us from this group of people. What does this group of people represent? Those people represent misstatement, errors, fraud, theft, which is misappropriation, so on and so forth. So misstatements, errors, fraud, theft, they are a threat to our assets, to our accounting information system. They're going to try to convince our employees to commit fraud, to steal money from us, or budge the financial statements. The fourth is to help us protect assets, the accounting information system, and the employees. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Now let's talk about specifically what internal control is. Well, that fort is basically policies, processes, and procedures. That's what that fort is. But it's set up by management. Management set it up to perform the following objectives. We have four objectives. One, reliability of financial reporting. And this is what I meant by the accounting information system. We want to make sure that the figures reported whether externally or internally, are fairly and timely presented. Fairly means they are correct, they, they represent what actually happened, all the figures are there, the valuation is correct, and timely, we are provided this information for users on a timely basis so they can make relevant decision about the company or how to run the company. That's one objective of the financial, uh, of the internal control, reliability of financial reporting. Number two, efficiency and effectiveness of operation. Simply put, we have asset, we have resources, we're going to be utilizing those resources in the most efficient and effective manner. What does that mean? It means operating at the lowest cost while achieving the same objective. It doesn't mean we need to reduce cost to minimal. Well, yes, we reduce cost to minimal as long as we are achieving our business objective. So we don't want to have any wasteful assets. Now, how do we do so? We set standards, we set budget, we use variances to follow up. This is how we can have efficient and effective operation. Compliance with laws and regulation. We want to make sure our employees who are inside this fort are following the, the, rules, the rules and the regulations. How? We give them training, education, yearly reviews, reminding them about the policies and procedure, giving them that handbook when they start working for the company, company's policies, reviews, 
take disciplinary action to send the correct message if someone did something wrong, violated laws or regulations. Guess what? We discipline them. And the fourth, object, the fourth objective of that fourth of the internal control is the safeguarding of assets. How do we safeguard assets? Pretty straightforward. Locks, security cameras, fences, any prevention of loss effort is considered safeguarding of assets. We could use password if, it, if the information is not physical, it's intangible in nature or tech digital. Now, there are five components of the internal control. Now, I'm going to kind of show you, show you physically what it looks like. So if this is the fourth, what is this fourth composed of? What's, what, what makes up this fourth? There are five components that, that make up this fourth. The first component is control environment. Again, we're going to have one whole session about control environment in which we'll discuss the, the various components. There, is, there are sub components of control environment. We have another component called monitoring. Also, we'll have a session about monitoring to, to understand what is monitoring within internal control. Notice those are the component of the fourth. Risk assessment is the company assessing the risk properly. Information and communication. They have a proper communication infrastructure, accounting information system. Is communication flowing smoothly throughout the company, upward, downward, so on and so forth. And also the company will have control activities and all of those component, that's what internal control is. That's what this fourth is composed of, those five components. Those five components put together, properly utilized, properly implemented and maintained, they can protect you from misstatements or minimize misstatement, minimize, or you'll try to eliminate, but you're going to see there are always weaknesses in internal control. Notice the weaknesses here. This area is not protected. This area is not protected, right? There are always weaknesses, but we'll do our best in avoiding, preventing misstatements, avoiding errors and fraud, protecting our, our assets from theft and appropriation. What should you do now? Go to Far Hat Lectures and work MCQs, true, false, multiple choice questions that's going to help you do better on your exam. Good luck, study hard. Good.